Hello and welcome to Winging It. So we are back here with game two of my round four matchup. So yeah, if you haven't seen the first game in this series, definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, if you don't want a spoiler, definitely click away now. Uh, but it was a close win for us in game one. So uh, we take those and yeah, as a best of three, if we can win this game, we go straight through into the next round. Uh, however, if we lose, then there will be a decider. Winner takes all to see who goes into the next round. So. Um, yeah, as we went first in game one, we are going to be going second here in this game two. And let's see what we have got in our starting hand. And as starting hands go, it's not the best, but it's certainly workable. Um, obviously, the real kind of glaring omission is any sort of wetland bird. Uh, but the bee eater is a good option. And I think potentially that red shouldered hawk as well um, could work quite nicely. So, um, yeah, very, very interesting tray. So, obviously, that kind of, obviously, that white wagtail really kind of catches your eye as one of these uh, new teal powers where you get to play extra birds at the end of each round. So um, yeah, my opponent uh, in the first game of the series, they played the yellow hammer, which is a uh, same kind of power and really, really managed to make good use of it. So um, yeah, kind of having that knowledge of seeing my opponent uh, clearly having a good understanding, a good experience of how those birds work. Uh, I am definitely expecting that they are going to take it. So uh, obviously I've got to kind of set myself up in a way where if they don't take it, then I can, because I think it's such a good power. And uh, yeah, could could potentially work well with this setup where I'm scoring points and getting food from multiple habitats uh, if I do go with the bee eater at the hawk. Uh, but yeah, I've got to, like I say, prepare myself for all situations. And certainly if they take the wagtail, then that means I'm going to be able to get that harrier. And uh, I think that works as well. Obviously, like I said, no, wetland bird is a real shame. Um, but harrier, it works in a pinch. So, uh, yeah, I can obviously look to get that down, hopefully start laying some eggs, drawing some cards, and hope to get something better. So, yeah, see, I uh, did keep the Griffin Vulture, which is a bit of an unusual one. Um, kind of what I was thinking in my head is, if I do play the Harry and the Hawk early early game, then it could be worthwhile. Uh, but even if I don't, then it is just a card for discarding. So, you know, if I do play the, the Hawk, I can discard it and get some food. But, um, yeah, as kind of expected, my opponent does... Uh, take the wagtail um, and as I was saying I was planning on taking the harrier but when your opponent reveals mallard uh, and you have no card draw I think that's a, that's a really nice pick up so yeah it's not the best bird but obviously getting those extra cards at the start of the game is, uh, is so important and if I do get some extra worms with this bee eater power then that's just going to help me out as well so so yeah we go here on to our next turn and I'm just going to say it I hate playing against this black-headed gull. I think of all the birds that I least like to see played in round one, that is definitely high up there. Um, it's just such a frustrating bird to be playing against um, with your opponent stealing food off you and then you're kind of at the mercy of whatever's in the bird feeder. So um, yeah, obviously uh, with the worm that is there, uh, I'm going to grab that and uh, hopefully look to get this bee eater down. But I am kind of expecting that my opponent's going to steal it and then leave me with no replacement option in the tray. Um, and yeah, it just it really strongly affects your early game tempo. And yeah, I've said this before, the early game is so important to getting your setup working uh, and getting it in a place that you're happy with. So um, yeah, as expected, uh, the worm gets stolen and there's no replacement. So I'm just going to have to take whatever I can get. Um, kind of really what I'm thinking is if I if I take the the least numerous food in there, I hope for a re-roll sooner rather than later. Um, but yeah, you know this this early game tempo is so important. Like one or two food can be worth like one or two turns. So obviously having to pay that extra food there it now means that I don't have a food to play the mallard, or maybe I don't have a food to play the hawk that I otherwise would have had. Um, and yeah, just you know losing a couple of turns worth of tempo in this early game. It can really, really cost you uh, a huge number of points throughout the rest of the game. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll stop moaning about the goal. Um, it is just uh, it's such a frustrating bird to play against, but really, really strong if you can get it. So, uh, obviously, my opponent really maximizing off that there, and they're able to steal the worm and uh, and get that great crested flycatcher down. So, um, they are looking really, really strong. Um, you know, they've got good access to, to all resources. Obviously, they can get cards and food in the same turn in the wetlands. They can get loads of food in their forest through this flycatcher. And uh, yeah, certainly with plenty of extra turns left in this round, I'm expecting this wagtail to go down. Then they'll look to lay eggs on that. 
and uh, yeah, still have some extra turns for maybe getting cards or getting food and uh, and looking to play some extra birds through the Wildtail Power. Um, but for me, yeah, easy enough. Lay Eggs uh, did get fortunate enough on the reroll. And uh, obviously, if my opponent does choose to steal the worm, uh, luckily there's a worm and there's a seed if I needed it. But uh, yeah, my opponent, as kind of I did expect, uh, they do go for food. So I'm going to just rush and get that mallet down. I'm not even going to waste time uh, trying to get more food or anything because I know it's just going to be stolen. So um, yeah, when you're coming up against this kind of black headed goal, you really have to play and think differently. You kind of have to rush things down, you have to really use your food before it gets stolen. Um, so yeah, I kind of as expected my opponent does play um, that Wagtail. Uh, I'm going to draw cards because yeah, I'm not taking food uh, through this Bee Eater if they're just going to steal it. So um, yeah, all in all, not a bad turn picking up cards. Um, I think the, the Harrier, like I said, already kind of had my eye on that before. Uh, and the Trumpet of Swans are a pretty good pickup as well. Obviously big points. Uh, it's going to help for one of the end of round goals later. And uh, yeah, you know, obviously my food access isn't the best at the moment. Uh, but if my opponent does steal some worms and then I can get some seeds, it might be an option. So we'll see how it works. But um, yeah, my opponent, they, they lay their eggs. So they have uh, one extra turn here to do uh, whatever they want, be that drawing extra cards or, or getting some food to play birds. But um, yeah, for me, I think I have to lay eggs here. I'm um, just, you know, try and start to, to get a little bit of food going, uh, even if it is just worms. Like I said, uh, they're going to get stolen. And then hopefully I can, you know, get some seeds or get some rodents and uh, and look to get some more of these birds down. But yeah, there we go. Indeed, <laughs> my food does get stolen. So uh, I'm definitely going to try and uh, make the most of that by, yeah, starting to get some of these seeds. Hopefully prepare to uh, to get this trumpet to swan down at some point. Uh, obviously kind of planning a little bit ahead here, but you know, it's useful to kind of have that in mind. But yeah, we'll lay eggs again. We'll get another worm. And uh, it goes over to my opponent to use their, their round end power. So uh, obviously they, they do have that worm they just stole off me. So uh, if they've got a nice cheap bird they can play, I'm sure they'll be looking to do that. And uh, yeah, just extend out one of these habitats to uh, hopefully you know get themselves more access to, to some resources as well. So yeah, they win their end of round goal as well, thanks to the wagtail. Uh, four extra points for them, very, very nice. And uh, we go into the next round. So uh, yeah, you'll see they play the downy woodpecker, which is kind of unusual. Uh, but it's a free bird, so I think, you know, you may as well make those for that. But uh, for me, I'm going to go for cards. And uh, definitely that red start is uh, is looking quite nice. You know, just as a way of hopefully getting some more food so that uh, even if some of it is stolen, I'm still going to have a little bit extra to work with. Uh, and it goes without saying that that's a really strong bird for my opponent. So uh, even if I'm not going to play it myself, I think I have to pick it up to deny. So, yeah, I was quite happy. Uh, but then I revealed the Violet Green Swallow. And uh, yeah, that was kind of the first point in this game where I thought I'm probably not going to win this uh, because that's just such a strong power. Um, obviously, you know, they've got pretty decent access to cards. Obviously, um, they're going to be needing to spend some turns drawing cards uh, that get them obviously cards, but food as well. Uh, but, you know, that swallow, you can pretty easily stick it in any habitat. They're going to get loads of worms <laughs> either stolen from me as they did there or, uh, or through their own flycatcher power. And yeah, it just gives them you know, so much more card cycle and uh, yeah, ways to score points and, and hopefully find extra birds that they want to play with this Wagtail. So I'm kind of a no-brainer. Uh, not at all surprised that they went and grabbed that. And uh, yeah, like I said, definitely I'm expecting them to, to go for food and try and get that down. Um, but for me, you know, managed to get the rodent, obviously, thankfully. Uh, you know, you got to try and benefit where you can from the, from the food that you get stolen. Um, so yeah, get the rodent, get the Harrier down. And, you know, this grassland's not bad now. It's going to get me three eggs. It's going to get me potentially a, a tuck card through the Harrier. And then obviously a worm through the Bee Eater as well. So um, it's a start. Uh, but obviously, you know, if I could have had that Violet Green Swallow, uh, I would have been even happier. But we keep going. We keep laying eggs. This Bee Eater keeps working, uh, which is very, very welcome indeed. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to keep going, getting our worms. Uh, we'll see if we keep getting some food stolen. Uh, there is obviously another seed in there, so... Uh, kind of getting pretty close to being able to play this uh, this Trepid Swan. Uh, but equally, I've got the Brant in my hand, so that could be an option uh, just to help get some more cards. Obviously, uh, another bird for the Eulogist that I haven't really talked about yet, um, and another bird that has a grab nest for that next end of round goal. So, um, yeah, for now, we'll just keep laying eggs as long as we've got space. Um, take the worm, and uh, yeah, I think I'm set up in a, in a good position here to kind of see what... Uh, 
I want to be doing on my next turn. So now obviously if, if the worm gets stolen, I can grab a seed, maybe play the play the swan. Uh, otherwise I could play the brant, or I could even overpay and maybe force down one of these forest birds, uh, which yeah, I might choose to do. So uh, my opponent, yeah, they get the swallow down. And that's just such a strong grassland already. You know, getting the getting the three eggs and then the tuck card and the cycle through the deck. Uh, really, really strong option for them. So um, yeah, so I'm super envious, but um, you know, I, I've just got to put it behind me and, and try and work with what I've got here. So yeah, you see, I'm kind of I'm looking at the red start. I'm looking at the hawk. There's kind of two options. So I could play either of them. Um, I think in the end, I would have to say this was a mistake. I think I probably should have gone for the red start and just really hammered that forest and drawn a lot of food because you know this is a really kind of tricky spot to work with the bee eater where you're only getting one food at a time and then it's just getting stolen and you have just so little control over being able to get the right food that you need to play birds um, i think in my head i was thinking okay if i play the hawk then i can try and play uh, you know the griffin vulture and and try and really maximize out on the cash food from that uh, i i don't think that was the right play i think that was kind of a, a lost cause and uh yeah really trying to force yourself to work with a card like that uh, when the setup isn't right, uh, definitely not worthwhile. And yeah, I mean, in the end, uh, Griffin Vulture definitely isn't going to work because uh, we get the American Robin in the tray. So uh, definitely some good fortune makes up a bit for missing out on the on the Violet Green Swallow. So um, yeah, I was quite happy with that. And uh, Spotted Owl as well, pretty good pickup uh, from the deck. So maybe I can look to get that down later as well. But um, yeah, obviously with just one turn left here and uh, no eggs towards this end of round goal. I'm pretty clearly going to have to go and lay eggs here. So um, no chance to play the Vulture, uh, as nice as it would be. Um, so yeah, that Hawk definitely not looking like uh, a very good play here. But um, yeah, we've made our bed, so uh, we're definitely going to have to lie in it here. So we'll lay eggs. That White Stalk would have been very, very nice. Uh, so uh, kind of wishing my Harrier didn't try and eat it. Uh, maybe I could have drawn it on the previous turn instead. But you know, that's how the game goes. Um, yeah, it always does seem to be that when your hunters miss like that, it's on really strong birds that you would have rather had yourself. But um, there we go. We get a worm on the bee eater. So uh, hopefully we're going to still be able to have that in our hands uh, on our next turn. So we can uh, we can play this Robin and, uh, and start laying some eggs, tucking cards through the deck and uh, yeah, hopefully get some more birds worth playing. And so we come to this end of round. Uh, again, we lose it pretty convincingly. And so you see my opponent through their Wagtail Power. They got the order in Skull down. Um, and definitely this is the point where I thought, yeah, I'm going to lose this game uh, because that's just such a strong bird to get in the wetlands. Uh, obviously, you know, you draw two cards and then you keep one and tuck the other. So you're getting points and you're getting extra cards that you can then use to play uh, with your yellow hammer. Or, you know, maybe if they're not so good, you can just tuck them under the swallow. Uh, and then all the while, of course, they still got that black headed goal uh, to get some extra food as well while drawing cards. So, um, yeah, they've got a really, really strong setup. And uh, they're definitely ahead in the points uh, at the moment already. And uh, I definitely feel like, yeah, they're going to sort of extend that lead as the game goes on. But yeah, we get the worm stolen. Luckily, we can just grab it straight back from the bird feeder and get this robin down. So um, yeah, this was kind of, for me, no time for messing about. You know, we're already in round three. We're already getting into the end game. I can't afford to you know, be messing about and not having this engine set up. I need to get the birds down as soon as possible, really. And uh, yeah, just start laying some eggs, tucking cards, getting some food, and uh, try and play some of these big point birds. Obviously, I think the Trumpeter Swan that I've got in my hand still could be a, a worthwhile play, um, particularly if I can get it down for this end of round goal. Uh, but also that Spotted Owl uh, going to be a, a nice option to have as well. So um, yeah, this turn I play the Griffin Vulture. Again, as I said earlier, oh, I don't think this was really the time and place for it. So I think in my head, I was just thinking, you know, it's that extra grass and birds. I know it's going to get me at least four cached foods, you know, maybe a fifth if I can find another uh, hunting bird uh, before the end of the game. But yeah, I just don't think that was a good play. Um, at the time, I was uh, so dead set on doing it. But yeah, that was, a, that was not a good play. So uh, if I could go back, I would not have done that again. Uh, I would have just laid eggs and, uh, and tried to get something better from the deck. But here we go. We unexpectedly get a free card from the Oyster Catcher. And uh, it is a really, really timely American Crow. So there's kind of two things to think about here. There's amazing. I just got the American Crow. That's going to save me, help me get a load more food. There's also 
what card did my opponent pick that was so much better than the American Crow that they could afford to leave it? Um, so that's the kind of dread that's going through my mind is that, you know, they must have found something amazing if they were willing to to leave the American Crow and take that instead. So um, there's always that bit of uncertainty again with the Oyster Catcher in terms of, you know, I have no idea what card they picked up. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see and uh, hope it's not a good one. Um, but yeah, all I can do here is is make the most of what I've got. And certainly that American Crow, really, really good. Um, yeah, just... It helps get that extra food. Um, you know, if some of it is stolen, I can obviously get whatever I want um, using that American Crow power. So, um, yeah, kind of pretty easy start laying some eggs. Obviously, tuck some of these birds I'm not going to play. Uh, Golden Eagle, very, very nice pickup from the deck. We get a hunt from our Harrier and we get a worm from the Bee Eater. So, uh, more turns like that would be very, very welcome indeed. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I could use this Crow to kind of get a mixture of seeds and rodents to try and play some combination of the swan and the eagle and the owl uh, obviously at the moment uh, i've got seven birds out of nine towards my oologist so i know i'm going to need to put at least two and uh, yeah plenty of turns left to, to look to get some of these down so yeah i mean i'm just like I say going to keep laying eggs uh, my opponent also continuing to lay eggs um, they have got plenty of uh, cards i think thanks to the oyster catch and obviously some turns uh, drawing cards to, to really benefit and make the most of that so yeah we keep laying eggs. Uh, we're going to keep yeah, trying to get some of this food for, uh, for playing these big point birds we've got. We're going to keep tucking some of these cards that we're never going to play. And uh, yeah, hopefully keep getting some hunts on the Harriet as well and keep getting some worms from the Bee Eater. So yeah, another pretty successful turn all in all. Now, obviously the pickup from the deck, maybe not quite as good. That Burrow's Golden Eye, probably a little bit late uh, for a pink power like that. And uh, yeah, don't really have a huge amount of cavity nest space to make it work, but... Um, yeah, certainly if I can if I can keep having a few more turns in that sort of manner where I'm able to get the food I want and uh, yeah, look to get some of these big point birds down then, you know, a big bonus card from the Spotted Owl could potentially uh, you know, look to bring me back into this game. So um, yeah, obviously the end of round goal kind of out of sight already, um, which is why I, I, I chose to keep laying eggs rather than playing birds. And uh, yeah, is, is what's going to have me lay eggs here as well. Obviously got the one on the Mallard, so um, that's at least going to qualify me and get me some points. But um, yeah, as long as I keep laying eggs here, uh, as long as I've got the space, uh, I can keep obviously getting some of these rodents and some of these seeds that I need. Keep tucking birds that I don't want. Uh, hopefully keep getting some hunts on the Harrier. Not so much that time, uh, but we do continue to get worms from the Bee Eater. So um, yeah, here we go. We get our couple of cash food from the Vulture. So uh, it's nice all in all. And uh, yeah, you'll notice there my opponent didn't get to lay an extra bird uh, with their wagtail. So um, this is a bug that's caused by the oyster catcher. Um, so, you know, at the time when they played the oyster catcher, what they should have had was the little cube at the top of their board to show they played a bird. Uh, but that didn't happen, uh, unfortunately for them. But um, yeah, we move on. We play our spotted owl and we get the missionary leader, uh, which is definitely not the bonus card i wanted to see um yeah this choice of two as well behaviorist behaviorist is just such a terrible bonus card to pick up late in the game because uh, chances are you're nowhere near completing it obviously in this position i could play the golden eye and get those three extra points but that's the same as just playing uh, the golden eagle for eight points and obviously the golden eagle comes with uh, an extra point through the given vulture so um, yeah i go for the visionary leader i'm just kind of thinking you know maybe I'm still going to have uh, five birds in hand, potentially, if I only play one of these and then lay eggs three times. Uh, but then I am going to have to think about egg space as well. So, yeah, really not the kind of bonus card you look to pull late in the game. And, uh, yeah, it's one of those where it can almost just be worth ignoring it rather than trying to meet it. But there we go. My opponent plays Benelli's Eagle. Uh, I have a strong feeling that was the card they got with the Oyster Catcher. Uh, and certainly, yeah, in that position, you, know, you keep Benelli's Eagle over Crow all day long. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of thinking in my head at this point, you know, obviously they unfortunately missed out on the extra play through the uh, through the Wagtail last time. Um, that extra play probably would have been the Benelli's Eagle. Um, so yeah, I was frustrated to see the Eagle because uh, it can often swing games like that. But all things considered, like I said, uh, they were quite unfortunate to miss out on the extra play. So uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold a grudge on them too much for that. But uh, for us, 
Again, we're just going to keep laying eggs. We're going to keep trying to get this food. So uh, in this case, we'll get our second seed. So uh, we're kind of gearing up really, I think, to, to look to play this uh, this Trumpeter Swan. Uh, we get another Tuck. We get another Hunt on the Harry as well. And we get another Worm from the Bee Eater. So as I said, uh, I'm still not feeling super confident about this. Uh, but if I can keep having a few more turns like that where everything is working out, you know, I'm getting the Tucks, I'm getting the Hunts, I'm getting the Worms. I've still got a couple of big point birds maybe to look to play. Uh, and I am looking strong in this end of round goal as well for the brown power. So, uh, you know, this could still end up being close. Obviously, my opponent um, kind of really trying to, to make the most of this wagtail in the final round as well. Uh, and I think the final round is the one where it's most tricky to do that. Because obviously, you, you only have five turns. And four of those are locked in. You know, you have to take one of each action to hit the wagtail. And then that just gives you one extra turn. You know, maybe you play an extra bird. Maybe you lay eggs. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, the... The point scoring isn't huge. You know, they get one point during cards and they don't get any points gaining food. So uh, it's a little bit limited in that perspective. But um, it's not going to change what we do. We're going to play this Trump to Swan. We're going to score a lot of points. And uh, I feel very satisfied with that indeed. So um, yeah, with only two turns left here, um, kind of the natural thinking is legs once play a bird. Um, that kind of is, is really what you look to do uh, if you don't have the X base of legs twice. Uh, obviously, for me, that is kind of going to scupper this visionary leader. So I am on the on the lower limit at the moment, uh, only having uh, five birds in my hand. So as soon as I play one of those, I'm going to lose four points from the visionary leader, uh, which is really, really annoying uh, to, to have to deal with late in the game. Now, obviously, I could spend a turn drawing cards uh, and bump myself up to the next tier of visionary leader, uh, but that's only worth three points. And, you know, for those kind of late game turns, three points doesn't really cut it. Uh, unfortunately so uh, yeah you see this is another kind of uh, unusual situation where having my food stolen for me was good because it meant i could get that extra rodent so uh, yeah my opponent obviously needed to draw birds uh, they could only steal worms from me and uh, luckily do get a rodent on the reroll. so uh, yeah we're gonna lay eggs we'll get another rodent uh, we'll get another tuck card hopefully another tuck from the harrier we do indeed and uh, yeah that didn't really matter too much on the bee eater obviously we could have forced the, uh, the eagle down but it's nice for it to continue working and uh, yeah I don't think it missed a single time this game um, certainly you expect at least a couple of failures throughout the game uh, if you've played it if you played it in the first round and, and activate it a lot so um, I will take it I'll be very happy with that um, but as I say uh, overall I don't think it's uh, it's going to be enough to, to bring me back into this game so yeah the points look okay they're not great uh, obviously part of that is due to the visionary leader and I'm going to lose some points from that as well uh, when I do play the golden eagle on this last turn so uh, for my opponent I think they are just going to have those couple of turns laying eggs obviously scoring lots of points and then they'll be able to use the wagtail and uh, and get that extra bird down at the end so um, yeah you see there four points for the visionary leader with those five birds but unfortunately uh, playing a bird we are going to lose those four points which is a shame um, but you know it's uh, it's a necessary evil um, you see, I was kind of looking at the brand and I was thinking to myself, if I play the brand, how many cards is that going to leave me on? Uh, unfortunately, it would have only left me on seven, uh, which is one short of the upper threshold. So if that could have bumped me up and maxed out Visionary Leader, it might have been worth playing over the Eagle. Um, but yeah, just from the extra cash food that I am going to get from this Griffin Vulture, uh, yeah, playing the Eagle, it still gets me some points. So um, yeah, we've done all we can. Uh, it's over to our opponent, obviously. Yeah, pretty decent lead in the end of round goal. I, I can't see them getting three brown powers down uh, in the in the two more turns they have potentially for playing birds. Um, so I feel at least pretty secure in that, uh, having played that golden eagle. So yeah, there we go. They lay eggs on their last turn. Uh, we are going to get our Griffin Vulture activation while uh, the game decides to show us all of the help options. Uh, I don't think I need that game at this point. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, we get our we get our cached food from the vulture. There we go. We do win uh, the end of round goal with more brown powers, and we go into the final score. So yeah, I wasn't feeling too confident about this one. Uh, I was expecting uh, a pretty sizable defeat here. Uh, did manage to keep it pretty close after bird cards and bonus cards as well, uh, but obviously lose some end of round goal points. I was hoping to gain some ground on eggs, but in the end, we both have 18, so no ground to be gained. Obviously a little bit there with the cash food, but I know my opponent is going to have more tuck cards. And there we go in the end. It is a defeat by 94 points to 88, so 
uh, pretty, pretty close in the end. Certainly closer than I was expecting. Uh, it's one of those where you kind of look back and you think, yeah, maybe if that Benelli's Eagle didn't come up, obviously that's a huge point bomb that's very easy to play uh, with the Wagtail. Then you start to think to yourself, oh, maybe I could have had a chance. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to begrudge my opinion of it too much. As I said, uh, they did unfortunately miss out on a Wagtail activation uh, due to the, the bug with the Oyster Catcher. So, yeah, if that had activated properly, I'm sure they could have easily scored another 5-10 points from that. And uh, the scoreline would have looked a lot less flattering for me. But, um, yeah, there we go. It's a defeat. We take it. We move on. And we go into a deciding Game 3 in this series. So, hopefully we can bounce back and win that and uh, advance through to the next round. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and I'll see you again in the next video.